Hi guys, so we are going to do um, a couple series of videos today while I have time. Um, but each video is going to be uploaded every Tuesday. I'm going to start doing um, tackle tips and things of that nature on Tuesdays. And then my regular fishing videos slash unboxings will be on Thursdays. Um, that way I can get more videos out to y'all because y'all seem to be more interactive when I post more videos. Um, so today we're going to start out with the standard Texas rig. I'm going to show you how to rig it and tell you where I like to fish it at. So I hope you enjoy. Okay guys, welcome back to 706 Fishing. Um, I'm Hannah and today I'm going to be teaching y'all how to um, rig up a Texas rig. I'm going to do both weighted and non-weighted um, with two different plastics and I'm going to tell y'all where I'll fish them at. Um, so let's get started. So I'm just going to use some old line that I really don't use um, to show y'all. So first um, we'll do the non-weighted Texas rig. So all you need would be a um, hook. Since I'm going to use a um, a rather large worm to demonstrate this, I'm going to use a five lock. Um, you can also, I mean, you can use whatever you want. If you if I throw a trick worm, I'm going to throw a three or four up. Um, and then when I throw the old monsters or the bigger worms, I throw five volts. Um, I like both red and regular color hooks, um, but it's whatever your preference is. This is Gummer Got Two Hooks. Um, so first, you start out by tying whatever kind of knot you like. I don't really have, I don't really get into all the knots. Um, but what I like to do I don't know if you can see this or not. But I take it like this and I wrap it eight times. I don't know how many I'm at because I wouldn't count. But then you go back through the hole. You go back through the hole. If I can get it through there. And then you wet your line. And you pull it back down. And I just recently started wetting my line when I did this because I heard that um, when you cinch it down it doesn't burn your line. So then you I usually pull on the hook make sure it ain't going nowhere. You said it ain't going nowhere and then I cut the tag in off. You can use fancy little scissors or whatever but I always bite it off because <laughs> I just don't care. Um, But next you want to turn your hook upside down um, find there's usually a flat portion of the worm that does not have the ribs as you can see on this um, the net bait C mag it's got kind of it's not flat but this side doesn't have any ribs so you put the worm with the rib side facing away from the hook and the flat or side that does not have the ribs towards the um, shank of the hook come up to where it bends and pull it out Start it up the hook, pull it, and turn it around. I like to put the worm over my um, knot. I don't know why the stopper's always on that. And then you measure where your hook point needs to go, and you thread it in, and then pull it up to make it more straight. Key is to get it as straight as you possibly can. You can see that it's not all that straight, but it's semi. Oops. It's straighter than it would be. Um, and then, if you want to make it a little bit more weedless, because you see that the hook is exposed, you just take it and pinch it and run the hook back up into the bait. And that's called text posing. And that is how you do text string. Weightless text string. Um, so next we're going to do the weighted Texas rig. Um, I chose to use the Rage Crawl to demonstrate it this time. 
So you take your crawl, get it out of the packaging. I'm going to use a small hook. This is four out hook, um, and then you also need a weight. You keep in mind that you can use both lead and tungsten. Um, so here's a lead, and here's a here's a tungsten. Um, it really doesn't matter. Um. Tungsten supposedly gives you more sensitivity, but I've never had any problems with the lid. Um, but I'll just show y'all with the tungsten um, while I have it out. So, um, instead of wasting a regular bobber stock like these on this whole noise, I'm just going to use the cheap 99 cent um, T pegs. Um, if you're on a budget and you can't afford. Um, you don't want to get like 10 bobber stops on one of these little um, things and it's like a dollar and um, you can get like a hundred of these T-stops at Academy for 99 cents. Um, so for this demonstrating purpose we're just going to use this instead of wasting my bobber stops. Um, and you also if you decide that you don't want to um, have the weight, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Okay. So first of all, we're going to tie on the hook. You gotta put the weight first. That's too big of a weight. We can get it out. All right, first you're gonna put on the weight. If I can get it in there, and you just kinda of sit it there. Then you tie on your hook. Do the same little knot I taught y'all earlier, which is just you turn it eight times. I'm not really going to count now because it really doesn't matter. I'm not putting this on a pole, um, but I do it eight times. Let it cinch it down. Make sure it ain't coming out. Then you cut it. Um. What I like to do before I put the worm on is I like to peg it. So to put the um, the T peg stops on, you just put it through the hole of the weight. So like this, and it comes out, and you pull it, and it's got a slot for your line to go. You just wiggle it until it gets to that slot, and then you pull it, and then you put it on the line. Then you cut it, and then you can you have your weighted uh, EWG hook. Then you put the um, crawl in the exact the exact same way. You put so you put the belly, or you know in this case this is black and blue. You put the blue side towards the shank of the hook like this. You go in to the bend come out, swing the crawl, and I'll move your line up a little bit, swing your crawl up, let it come over the knot like that, and go the exact same way. So you just measure where you want your hook to go then. And I like to go with a bigger hook on these crawls, simply because sometimes the fish don't they only grab the pinchers and if you are impatient like I am um, you yank it before they get it in their mouth and if you were go to go with a three out hook it would end up right about here and then the tip of the point or the tip of the hook or whatever will be right here so you if the fish just grabbed it right here you would not have that extra length of hook for it to come down and bend right there so I like to go with the bigger hook um, I've always been like that I don't really use anything under a three yacht, um, you know, except for when I'm racky, racky rig fishing or drop shot fishing. Um, so that is the weighted Texas rig. It's a rage crawl. Um, you can put a bead in between this um, if you wanted to. Sometimes, and I would leave the weight 
up right about here so the bee could have enough room to make some noise. Um, and also, you can um, have both a Carolina rig and a Texas rig at the same time. Um, and I learned this trick from, I don't know who it was, it was some professional fisherman um, on YouTube. And essentially what you do is you have a bobber stop on this end of the weight and this end of the weight. And you can put all your other things um, that are associated with the Carolina rig, like the bead and the clacker. Um, and then if you wanted to do it, you can have the weight right here. You could have it wherever you wanted to and you could just move it. And then you can make it a Carolina rig if you wanted to and have it like this. So, pretty versatile if you want to use the regular bobber stops. But if you're on a budget and can't really afford um, the bobber stops because they can be expensive, then you can most certainly go with just the regular T-stops. They are in the hook aisle of Academy. I've only seen them in Academy. I don't know if anybody else has them because um, I've only bought them from Academy. But they are called T-stops. Um, and they work really good. I like them a lot. So that is the Texas rig. Um, and where I So that is how to rig a Texas rig, both weighted and non-weighted. Um, I hope you learned something from this video. Um, I've had a couple people ask for me to do these types of videos, so I'm going to start doing them. Um, but if you see me wearing the same shirt in all of these videos, it's because I'm doing them all today um, while I have enough time. So I'm not wearing a dirty shirt. I'm just filming it the exact same day. So I'll see y'all on the next one.